50 laps to go. Caution clock approaching 12 and a half minutes. Remember, we turned that clock off with 20 laps to go, but if we go green till the clock runs out, we will we will have about 25 laps to go, so the caution clock is definitely still in play as of now. No change at the front. Matt Crafton enjoying the lead, as you see Abreu and the 11 of Herman Caroga battling for sixth. He's starting to move now. Yep. Starting to move. Yeah, there actually wasn't much of a battle to that, was it? Uh, <laughs> Abreu drove right by him, and I think he, you guys uh, hit it on the head. He has a long-run truck. He has got that thing working out there. And I, I tell you what, I, it's like I said earlier, I think running that high line is a lot easier on those tires, and he's, he's figured out how to do it. Roll up early, post a little bit, ease back into the Oh, throttle. trouble! It's the zero 05 five of Townley. Townley break, was inside the, break, the top the 10. Break. We had just watched Townley and Kennedy and Rico Abreu. Now Junior Joyner has a decision to make. He's got yeah. one one set of sticker tires left. We've got 48 laps to go this, right now. This is exactly what Junior didn't need to see. Yeah, and our clock is done. We will not yep. see the caution clock anymore because it would run out inside of 20 laps to go. He wanted to see the caution clock run out this time. Both right sides are down. You see as Townley limps to pit lane. I really don't see where he's got much of a choice on this. He's going to have to put that other set on, that bad set, because if he puts that good set on, he's done at the end. Yeah, the, I agree. And, and save that last set yeah. in case we get a caution. I mean, you know, we still have 47 laps to go right now. I got to believe that maybe we're, you know, we will have another caution flag at some point. So Crafton has, as we see John West Townley up there, Lose control and a great job yep. keeping that truck out of the wall, though. Tyler Reddick gets the free pass on this caution. See that he lift the rear tires up trying to keep that truck out of the outside wall, and that's exactly what it did. So Townley comes in. It's taken care of, and out he goes. So Crafton has one sticker set of tires and one set of mismatched tires. Three of those tires have about 10 or 11 laps on them, and then one tire would be a sticker tire. Yeah, and, and Junior's been thinking about that the whole time. He's already made the call because he's coming down the pit road this time. What do you think he's going to do? I, what would you want as a driver? Would you I, want the I'd mismatch want, set now? Or I, I'd you, rather have them now than, than, than have to worry about putting them on with 10 or 15 laps to go. We heard Matt earlier say he wanted them, so you know what he's thinking. All right, Caitlin. Well, Timothy Peters is one of the Truck Series regulars still looking for that first win of the year. He told his team this truck starts out a little too snug, but I like it. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment for tires and fuel as well. Hermie. The 88 of Matt Crafton hits his pit box. Dominant truck, but they are going with four sticker tires on this stop. No adjustments on the 88 truck. The 21 of Johnny Salter, the right rear, is out of the racetrack. You can see an adjustment in the right rear. Four tires, Sunoco fuel, down and away, and the race off pit road will be won by the 88. Great job by Junior Joyner and his guys. And, and it was going to be a roll of the dice no matter what, whether he put the four stickers on like he did or put the other tires on. It was a roll of the dice because he's gambling right now that we're not going to see another caution flag or that it's going to come so soon that nobody will stop putting put another set of tires on. It was an issue for Hemrick in that 19. That's too bad. He was running inside the top 10. Don't know if he got in the wall, but they're definitely working on the brace on the quarter panel. Less than 50 to go. Can anybody catch Matt Crafton? Well, here we are, coming back to one to go, Texas Motor Speedway. you got your last set of stickers on this truck. What has to happen for you to win? It has to stay green, and the Menards Tundra has to be leading. <laughs> That's a perfect scenario for us. So, uh, you know, if the yellow comes out with 10 or so to go, we'll come and we'll put these on, and, and we'll just see what he can do. But uh, you know, we got 11, three, three tires with 11 laps and, and one brand new one. So 
I guess we'll see how good we are then, huh? Uh, we'll see what happens. But these guys have been the story all night. The 88, we'll see how it unfolds. Mm. I don't know. You know, uh, if they have to put those tires on, it might be okay for a little bit with cold old tires. But it's, man, that's an iffy is, call. Is it wrong that's, for us to hope that we uh, that we see that? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, I think <laughs> it is. Oh, okay. yeah. then never mind. As far as Junior and Matt Crafton are concerned, it's wrong, yes. <laughs> Here's the restart, getting ready to go with Matt Crafton on the outside, that control vehicle, the nine of William Byron inside. Green racing, 43 to go at Texas. Solid restart by William Byron. Actually has a bit of an edge right now on Crafton. He's got Timothy Peters behind him pushing. And Cole Custer is going to jump Cole. out make it three wide. Cole Custer diving down looking for third. Look at Rico up against the wall. Peters fighting back on the outside. Custer got loose. Going to lose a spot or two. Still a battle for the lead between Byron and Crafton. Johnny Sauter trying to figure out which way to go. Who's he wanting to follow? Right now he's going to slide in behind Matt Crafton. Byron and Crafton have combined to win the last three races. Crafton back-to-back -back winners. Byron won at Kansas. And who finished second at Kansas? Matt Crafton. Peters and Sauter right behind in case... These two get loose and battling, and they'll pounce, waiting for their opportunity. You know, that entire last run before that last caution flag, Timothy Peters stayed within a half a second of Matt Crafton throughout that run. What a great view from on board Matt Crafton. You see Byron lurch ahead just a bit. Crafton fights back. Side by side with 40 to go. Two pretty evenly matched trucks right now. Matt's giving him some room, but not a whole bunch extra say, room. We, we got to give Matt credit. He's not pinching that kid down and making him loose and taking a spot. He's, he's racing him for it. Talking about the veteran and the rookie. Crafton, as Phil noted, will turn 40 tomorrow. Two-time series champ, William Byron, 18 years old, just graduated high school. And they are side by side, door to door. From the view of Johnny Sauter. Well, those two guys have done an amazing job to stay side by side since this restart. Both of them using a lot of patience and giving each other a lot of room. Custer might have made slight contact with the wall. Custer was running seventh. Yet at front, we're still side by side. Every time one of the drivers gets a little bit of a head, Byron gets ahead just in that spot, and then Crafton gets the momentum, the off, momentum the off the yep. top and then he goes ahead, and then back and forth they go. Neither able to clear the other. Watch Cole Custer. I'm going to show you the replay. Can Byron get him? No. Watch Cole Custer right-hand side of your screen in that double zero. Little contact from John Hunter Nemechek. What an amazing save by that young man. How about Johnny Sauter? He's joined the partner. Matt Crafton finally gets the lead, and now Johnny's side by side with William Byron. Sauter's another one that likes that long run. It feels like his truck's been a little bit better as the run goes. Finds a little more speed, and he's now in second. Will set his sights on Crafton. And Timothy Peters right there as well. Now he's going to jump to the inside of William Byron. Those first three trucks have all won so far this season. Peters hoping to get his first tonight. For third you know, place. You know, William running underneath Matt for all those laps in a row really put a strain on the right front tire. And I, I, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if that thing's starting to push on him a little bit. You can see right there, it's just not rolling outside. 
Timothy not quite able to clear him. Byron holds on to that spot. Ben Kennedy and John Hunter Nemechek for fifth. We were worried at the beginning of the race where John Hunter Nemechek was qualified, and here he is late in the race here, racing in the top five. Rico Abreu. I think trying we're to make it a party. Rico's going three wide right here. I think we're going to see Rico Abreu finish with a top five here tonight. It's been a great run so far for that 98. Saw John, John Hunter get a little bit loose, loose up off up the, the corner. Good showing from Thor Sport tonight with Crafton leading the way. Ben Rhodes having a good run tonight. He's in eighth. Mention Rico in seventh. Make it sixth for Rico. Just got by the 33 of Ben Kennedy. Cameron Haley, the fourth truck out of the Thor Sport garage, down in 17th. Really impressed with Rico up here on the top and how smooth he is. And not overdriving. That's the hardest thing on the top is you want to overdrive it getting in, working on that right front tire, and, and you're ruining everything you're working for, trying to keep that thing rolling up there. So reminiscent of what Kyle Larson does in the Sprint Cup series, and Larson and Abreu have raced together so much. I guess <laughs> Kyle's giving a little cheering for uh, his buddy Rico tonight. Rico give John Hunter a little tap coming off the corner there. Had that run going. I think John Hunter has his hands full right now. That truck was pretty loose, but a good corner that time for John Hunter. And here comes Ben Kennedy. Yeah, I think Rico didn't get through there as good as he had been. Tip the cap to Kennedy and what he and crew chief Marcus Richmond have done tonight in their first time together. Yeah, very solid debut for that, for that team. Oh, Rico's Rico gonna try to it the on the bottom. Well, it looks pretty good too. Still can't make it. John Hunter Nemechek's got just enough to keep Rico behind him. 30 laps to go to the finish. Matt Crafton trying to win his third straight race. Last five races on mile and a half tracks. Matt Crafton has led the most laps in all of them. Tonight, he's been out front for 115 and counting. Inside of 25 to go, but Johnny Sauter has been closing the gap. I think right now that Johnny's tires are starting to go. This is about every run, his tires have started falling off right about this point. And you can see right now, Matt's just just inching away from them every lap. And remember, if we get a caution here sometime in the very near future, Matt Crafton has a mismatch set of tires in the box. The others have stickers, and that's going to be a big difference maker if it plays out that way. Even if his tires weren't mismatched, even if all of them had 11 or 12 laps on him, he's going to be at a distinct disadvantage. Now, with one of those tires being new, Junior may be able to put that tire in whichever corner he needs as far as for balance. Exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say, Phil. It, it, it might, it could actually work it into the, the setup. Maybe the star of the night has been that man, Rico Abreu. That move was for fourth place, Caitlin. Well, Rico said he was really looking forward to coming to Texas. He said from what he learned from his teammates, it races a lot like a dirt track, which certainly Rico's got a lot of experience at now. His best finish so far this season was 10 at Martinsville. They brought that same Martinsville truck to Texas this weekend, and Rico said, I feel like we're getting better. We just need to work on finishing races. I've had a lot of speed, but my goal is to just put a race together, and it seems like this team has done that. Decent qualifying effort in 13. They've now made their way up into the top five, guys. Yeah, and I'm telling you, Caitlin, he's been the fastest truck on the racetrack several laps here. Again, this lap, Rico Abreu is definitely on the move, and he's, he's not out of contention for possible win here. <laughs> I'm loving the way he's moving around. He's at the bottom at one end. He goes at the top. He runs the bottom. It, his truck is really good right now, and he's learning a lot. He's like the old dirt tracker. That's what you got to do. You got to find the moisture, whether it's on the top or the bottom. Major League Baseball whip around coming up next, immediately following our broadcast here, the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series.
Camping World 20 to go at Texas Motor Speedway just past 11 o'clock in the east. I think Rico's going to whip around William here in just a moment. He has chased him down. That will be a battle for the third spot. Yet again, Rico, the fastest truck in the racetrack by seven tenths of a second over Matt Crafton. Matt probably had some traffic he had to deal with. Abreu's career best was 10th at Martinsville earlier this season. So all, all the top four trucks, actually top five trucks in there. At one time you could see on the screen. See William Byron moving up the track. Trying to figure out how he can block Rico, I'm, I'm guessing. Let's get more on that nine of William Byron trying to keep Abreu behind him, Hermie. Vince, another solid performance for this young driver. He's been good on the racetrack, good getting on and off pit road, giving good feedback to his crew chief, Rudy Fugel. Been a little bit tight through the center of both ends of this racetrack. Last time down pit road, raised the track bar on the right side. And some great racing he pulled off with Matt Crafton on the most recent restart, but he's getting ready to have his hands full with the 98. Should be some good racing from here to the end. Well, I think, Todd, you made a great point. That battle with Crafton really is hurting him in the long run now. It is. You, you got to, you know, you can, oh, you can abuse these tires. And, and we see, we listen to these in-truck cameras, and these guys are lifting a lot. Way more than they ever have here. How about Tyler Reddick? What a great recovery for him. That got the free pass on our last caution flag. Restarted about 17th or 18th. Now has made his way back up into the top 10 running eight. Reddick needs this kind of performance too because from a points perspective, he's outside the chase eight. And if Crafton would hold on to win this race tonight, or Sauter, or Byron, they're the top three. They all have wins already. So getting another win just makes those points all the more important for those drivers who don't yet have a win. Right now, Junior Joyner is crossing his fingers, his toes, <laughs> every, his eyes, everything he can think of for this race to go green the rest of the way. And again, you think it would be unfair for us to kind of wish that maybe we'd see a yellow here so we'd have to put that mismatch set on just to see how, yes, good, they are, how good they really are. Totally unfair of us. <laughs> As Rico says, it's, I'm going for third right here. Rico Abreu closing in on Byron. I'm going to tell Junior, Junior, you mentioned it two or three times <laughs> that you were hoping he had to put those tires All on. All for the sake of the show. <laughs> yeah. Hearing maybe that uh, the 66 of Jordan Anderson may be putting a little fluid down on the track, so officials taking a close look, keeping an eye on that truck. Yeah, Junior Joyner saying there's absolutely no fluid on the racetrack. <laughs> so we're clean and green. See, I'm just thinking that would just give the 88 team an opportunity to prove their superiority. Putting those tires on with, you know, 11 yeah. laps on them and, and one. Okay, all right, Vince. And we've been watching Rico gaining on William Byron, but they're both gaining on Johnny Sauter. Yeah, Johnny, William, Johnny's truck is going away bad right now. Yeah, William Byron has been the fastest truck on the racetrack a couple of the last three or four laps. That time again, the fastest truck on the racetrack. Yeah, the top four all within two seconds. The one thing I've noticed watching Rico, He's trying to guess which way William's going to go so he's not in that dirty air and, and he's losing ground right he's now. Losing yeah, ground that was a big wiggle. It. That yeah. was a big wiggle. Yeah, he had chased William down and William has moved around the racetrack, moved up some and has been able to really gain on it. See Parker Klickerman who was having a good run, solid up in the top on the lead lap. Obviously mm -hmm. an issue for him. He was running 16th. See if he's going to stay on the racetrack. I, I've been listening to a truck that really sounded like the motor was yeah, sour, I, and that maybe that was part of it. It sounded it when we that shot in the back. Here comes William Byron. He's yeah. chased down Johnny Sauter in that battle for second. Both inside a second. Back from Matt Crafton. 
Now uh, Williams going to get a run right here. A little bit. No. Nope. Matt Crafton not that far out in front of them. Look at Rico now diving to the inside. Going to pull up even with William Byron. For third place with 10 to go at Texas. Got the 66 of Jordan Anderson. Rico now is going to have to duck back in behind William. He has room in the middle if he can make it work. The lap traffic going to make this interesting. 10 laps to go. Second, third, fourth right there. Just within a second of Matt Crafton. Mike Williams going to drive right by Johnny Sauter for second. Oh, it's like Sauter maybe got into the back end of Byron just a bit. Byron holds the position, and Abreu looking to take third from Sauter. That was huge by William Byron to be able to hold out of that spot and keep Johnny behind him. Johnny back. All right, go get that 88. Abreu inside of Sauter for third. Rico not Rico able to clear, clear Johnny. What a great battle we have here. All four trucks separated by less than a second. You make that move on the inside, but the momentum of that outside line just carries you through. It certainly does. See William and Rico both right up against the outside wall. Johnny Sauter about a lane down from that. There's your leader, Matt Crafton. William Byron's catching him. Coming to seven to go. Crafton trying to win his third race in a row. Rico Abreu chasing down Johnny Sauter. That's for third. It would be a career best finish for Abreu tonight. Matt Crafton continuing to flex his mile and a half muscle because he has been the master of the mile and a half. Remember, we heard him talking on the radio to Junior Joyner as Rico takes a dive down to the inside of Johnny Sauter. That as the, the tires fall job. off. Sliding. Rico's, ooh, Rico got a little bit loose. Johnny really gave he, him a break there. Yes, he did. Same situation with William Byron earlier. Abreu in third. That's William Byron ahead in second, and Byron trying to chase down that bright yellow Toyota of Matt Crafton. Boy, Byron is right there. He's within a couple truck lengths right now. He's got the outside working, getting that run off the corner. Oh, he stayed with him well right there. What a great battle. Five laps to go at Texas. Crafton and William Byron. Oh, he thought the about going to the inside. Byron on the high side trying to get that momentum. Matt got a little bit sideways down there. For the lead, William Byron takes it from Matt Crafton. Less than five to go. Rico Abreu in third. I think right now Matt Crafton is in shock that those guys were. Look, it got yeah. loose again. Rico's going to get him. Four laps remaining. Abreu stalking. Matt Crafton, the two-time series champ for second place. Matt's just trying to hold on to that truck right now. We saw how fast Matt Crafton has been this whole race. That's a sign of a truck that's good and free and rolling the corners. And at this run, it looks like that thing has stepped over the line and gotten too free. Can Abreu chase down William Byron? Coming to three to go. Already a career best finish for Rico Abreu if he holds on to this position, but you know he's thinking win right here. Can he get William Byron? We talked about the beginning of the show as he's chasing him down. Ten Come drivers on. here, never racing a truck at Texas. They're running one, two right now, two of them. Byron goes to the bottom. Abreu rim riding, trying to get that momentum off the corner. Two laps remaining. Good run right there. William Byron, the 18-year-old from Charlotte. Oh, Rico's yeah. in the fence. Rico's Rico, in the wall. Oh, he's in the wall. Yeah, he got up behind him. Got the, 
little what? arrow push, and it Coming put him the right in the fence. What a great, a race-winning move by William Byron to take that high line away Absolutely. from Rico. Stay in green. Rick, Rico still has his foot in it. White the white flag, flag. one to go. William Byron trying to hold on for the win. Oh, Rico Look, Rico's the in the again. wall again. He probably blew probably, that right front probably tire. Probably cut a tire down. Yeah. What a shame. Yeah, the right front tire looks like it's down on Rico's truck. He loses a spot to Johnny Sauter right there. William Byron is bringing it home. The teenager the is here. doing it job, again. Buck. His second career win, William Byron, victorious at Texas. Rico has got nothing to be ashamed of, folks. That was an incredible drive he had. Not at all, but what a great job by that 18-year-old William Byron. <laughs> Amazing. Win number two. Rudy Fugel. Hey, we had it when it counted. We get a cowboy hat, baby. <laughs> Rudy Fugel, his crew chief, was telling me before the race today that we weren't sure they had a race winning truck, but just coming here and getting the laps and the experience was going to be so good for his young driver, and now they're going to park it in victory lane. I just can't get over the move by William to take that outside line away. Rico may have driven right by him, guys, had William not have moved up the racetrack. Let's take another look at it. Look at the momentum Rico had here. He chased him down, he got right to his rear bumper, and then William runs the same line Rico's been running, and Rico gets got a little bit of arrow tight right behind him and got into the wall. Do you think that caught Rico off guard there because Byron did keep that uh, line? Absolutely. With the inexperience Rico had, that he didn't know that that's what was going to happen. He didn't expect him to run that high. What a, what a, I think our future is pretty healthy here in this I truck series. I think so. we got an incredible group of drivers. it down in Texas. William Byron is your winner. Matt Crafton, Johnny Sauter, Ben Kennedy, and Tyler Reddick round out the top five, and Rico Abreu finishes ninth. Like Todd said, nothing to be ashamed of for Rico. No, not at all. But what a great day. Just graduated from high school last week. Liberty University, the sponsor, one of the board members from the school was here tonight. And they are certainly proud of that young freshman to be at Liberty. What race presence though, Phil? Like you're right to to, to know to go up there and block that move. It's just, just the presence of mind to do that. Well, here's our winners that we've had so far this season, and William Byron joining Matt Crafton as the two-time winners on that chart. And, of course, Kyle Busch right there in the middle, one at Martinsville, not championship eligible in the truck series, but those other four got to be feeling pretty good about their chances. Caitlin Vinci downstairs. Well, Matt Crafton and Johnny Sauter exchanging some words here, it looks like. Matt, a runner-up finish for you. What happened in those closing laps? Was there anything you could have done differently? No, nah, if I would have done it, tried to do If I could have did anything different, I would have did it. Uh, we just lost it all uh, drive off the corner for whatever whatever reason right there. We ran so hard at the beginning of that run, and I said it just had zero, zero drive off. But I said it says a lot about this team. If you look at the right side of this truck, how beat up this thing is, to, I know it will let the most laps. and. Shoulda, coulda won this race, but like I said, it's all about these guys and never giving up. Matt Crafton, a runner-up here at Texas. Hmm. So strong throughout the course of the night, Crafton led 134 laps. As you look at our chase standings, remember eight make the chase. And it's a seven race chase that begins September 24th in New Hampshire. How about Ben Kennedy? Only three points right now out of that last chase spot. Great top five for him. Finished fourth. And Ryan Truex will fall off this list because he did not start this race uh, tonight. Was no, not here. No but longer chase eligible. Yep, have to make your attempts at all of the races. 
Great recovery by Tyler Reddick and his bunch to get a top five finish. He's 11 points clear now of the, of the ninth spot. John Hunter starting in the back, getting all the way up to seven. When you look at this list, those that haven't won, who would you expect to be the first to put it in victory lane out of that group? <laughs> Boy, Timothy Peters has been so solid. Another sixth place finish here tonight. Uh, so Timothy Peters would be my pick maybe to get to victory lane next. I, I said all last year, every week my pick to win was Daniel Henry. And I'm telling you, the kid's going to, when he wins the race, he's going to win several. William Byron won the race tonight. He was the star of the show, but his co-star was Rico Abreu. He finished ninth. He's with Caitlin. Thank you, Vince. Well, Rico, I know maybe you didn't get quite the finish you wanted, but what are some positives you can take away from this race? You, you had a strong one. Yeah, you know, definitely just build off of that. Uh, obviously not the finishes that we want. Uh, I've crashed uh, so many trucks for these guys, but uh, Duke and Rhonda Thorson, uh, I just thank them for believing in me and giving me this opportunity. Thor Sport Racing, uh, Safe Like Her Breakfast, they all um, are here because I'm here, and uh, it's just... Um, I, I just really disappointed. I wish I could get them some better finishes. And I know we have speed, and uh, I just got a lot of drive. And um, I, I just ain't, ain't ever going to quit. What was that battle like with William Byron in the nine? Um, you know, I got the top going in three and four there at the end. And I just, uh, you know, I kept following him and following him and following him. And you can only follow someone so long. And, um, you know, we come to the white, and uh, you just really got to push it, uh, you know, because. The way uh, they built this chase format, you have to win, and he's already in. So uh, I wasn't going to do nothing too stupid and wreck somebody because uh, I've done that before. And uh, I'm just, like I said, very fortunate for Safe Flight and Duke and Ronda Thorson, Thor Sport Racing, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Rico. Well done, young man, Rico Abreu. They knew he was here tonight, but William Byron takes it home. It's the second win of the season. He won earlier this se season at Kansas. Yeah, Johnny Sauter, Ben Rhodes got together three and four in the last lap, and he got that win, but he just beat them all tonight. Did it again. And Rudy Fugel, his crew chief, won here with Eric Jones last November. He's won it here tonight. Victory Lane with Hermie. Well, there he is, William Byron, Victory Lane for the second time this year in his young career. Awesome performance. What a great performance by you and your race team. First of all, the final five or six laps, you run down the 88 of Crafton, you take the lead, and then here comes the 98 of Rico Abreu. Walk us through those last couple of laps and the race winning move probably when you moved up the racetrack to drive to victory lane. Yeah, I found the top um, early in the race and it, it didn't work that well, lap 15 to 20 in the run, but uh, once I could get laps on the tires, it was really good. And uh, it's just all about heart. I mean, honestly, it's, uh, you know, you just gotta want it. And my team wants it and I see that every day. And uh, we had a, a Vietnam veteran here today with Liberty University and it's just really cool to have uh, Liberty University support and have a fast Toyota Tundra. When did you realize you had a shot to win this race? You guys were top five. Pretty much the entire race made a couple adjustments and the side by side racing with the 88 towards the end. Yeah, it was tough. I mean, we didn't have it that good till the last run, but uh, Rudy fixed me up the last run and I just can't thank everyone enough. Kyle, Samantha, KBM, uh, all the fans. It was a great crowd tonight. William Byron's in victory lane in Texas. What an exciting night for that young man and that team. Second victory of the season for Will Yum Byron. Our next race in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series will come your way next Saturday, the 18th of June. We'll be at Iowa Speedway. Well, that'll be fun. We'll do a little beating and banging there, I would say. You will indeed. Hey, Major League Baseball Whip Around is coming your way next. Well, it's been a fun one tonight for Todd Bodine and Phil Parsons, Caitlin Vinci, and Hermie Sadler. Congratulations to William Byron, the winner tonight at Texas Motor Speedway. I'm Vince Welch, so long from the Lone Star State.